Don't even worry about it. They can't hear you. It's all good. All right. We're all good. Everybody. Okay. Please ask questions if you're confused. All right. So what we're going to be um, talking about today is something called water displacement. And this is the part that's going to be on the test. Okay. Water displacement. With water displacement, if you've ever had the luxury of taking a bath, I personally just have a shower at my house, so I, <laughs> I have before taken a bath, but not, not recently. And so um, the bathtub, like if you have a bathtub, you fill it up all the way to the top with water, right? Or wrong? Would you fill up a tub all the way to the top with water and then get in? No, because what's going to happen? It it's going to overflow. <laughs> yeah, because no matter what, like, I don't care how light you are, you take up space. We all take up space. When you walk through a room, you're pushing those air molecules out of the way. So you usually fill it up to about that part, and then you get in, and it usually raises all the way to the tippity top, and you're like, get bubbles and all that stuff, right? So that's how it works. So water displacement is super useful to us because if you were to take um, this shape, to a math teacher, I hate to pick on math teachers, but to like a geometry teacher, they would probably say, um, oh yeah, you can just uh, type it into the volume of a cylinder equation and we could do a little bit of measurement and you would, you could definitely solve for it. They aren't wrong. They're absolutely correct. However, we're science. We're going to do it a different way. We're going to use water displacement because we know when you put something in water, it has to go somewhere. It's going to move up. So what we're going to focus on with this graduated cylinder is we're going to basically look at these two examples, okay? So um, sorry. So we have our little graduated cylinder. We're going to basically look at this measurement right here, okay? And so with that, there it goes. Nope, this is upside down. That's really awkward. All right. So anyway, so we're going to look at this. Okay, so people at home won't be able to see this part, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take the measurement just because we're going to run out of time. So what I'm looking at here is that I am at 120. I lied. I'm at 130. Okay, 130. So what you guys are going to do on your piece of paper that you guys have at your desk, okay, is you're going to take one of those colors. We're going to go ahead and draw a little line to say that, okay, that went up to... 130 milliliters, okay? And I'm just gonna take one of my colors and I'm gonna color it under here, okay? Okay, so again, we are messing with this cylinder, all right, so we kinda see that. So, in order to get density, what other piece of information am I gonna definitely need to get? Hmm? Probably the weight, the mass, right? So I'll go ahead and do that. We put it on this little scale. We get a mass of 49.80. 49.80. So what we're going to do is down here at the bottom, we're going to go ahead and write that down. We're going to say this is a dark cylinder. We're going to say mass 49.80 grams, right? So can we just use these two numbers and get a density? Okay. No. No, because what's the 130 of, you guys? Is it of this? No, it's of water, right? So what we're going to do is I'm just going to slide that into the little graduated cylinder. Okay, so we are back to graduated cylinder here. And we are going to get what this thing raised up to because it took up space. So I'm going to go ahead and look at this now. And we get... 130246. So our final volume was 136. So all that we're going to do is we're going to draw another line right about there. 136 milliliters. Okay? You're going to take that other color, you're going to color that in to show yourself when you go to study this later that that raised it up. Okay? So we started here, we raised up to this part. So question. Now, what are we going to type in in order to solve for density? If I want to solve for density, we know it's going to be mass over volume. We have the mass, 
What are we going to put for volume, do you think? Look at all our information. We have 136, 130. Yeah. You guys, think. 130 was where we started. 136 is where we ended. What was the volume? What did it? What space did it take up? Right, because I put the thing in, and then that water level rose. Six, exactly. Do you guys see what he did? He took this number, he said 136 minus 130, because the difference between those two is what the space was that the cylinder took up. Does that kind of make sense? That's how we got our volume. So we now have six milliliters if we were to solve for this. I'm typing mine in. You guys can do the same if you wanted to. So I have 49.80, and I'm dividing it by 6. I get 8.3, right? So I have a density of 8.3 grams per milliliter. All right. So I think I left it over here. There it is. Okay. So looking at this little options here, these little options here, okay, which of the metals do you think this one is? Copper. You would think copper, right? Because it says I 8.94. However, did you see what I held up to begin with? Did it look like a penny? No. So it definitely wasn't copper. So what would be our next best choice? Iron. Iron. And that's exactly what it was. All of that to tell you that no matter what, it could be shaped like a bunny, it's still going to have the same density. Density is an intensive physical property, meaning no matter what, it stays the same because of who it is. Okay? So one of the questions you'll see on the quiz in a second is going to be if I cut it in half, what happens to the density? It stays the same. No matter what, okay? All right. 